Hi and welcome to a British audio file. For those of you who don't know me already, my name is Taron. The Denifrips Pontus DAC was upgraded at the beginning of 2021. I know we're entering into the second half of the year. What can I say? This is a popular product. It took me a little time to get my hands on it. I still believe it's one of the first reviews on YouTube though, if not the very first. And over the Pontus One, there's an upgraded power supply with new capacitors, an upgraded DSB board, as well as the odd tweak here and there in the circuit. I was hugely impressed with the Denifrips Ares 2 when I reviewed it back in December 2020, giving it an outstanding. I still think that that DAC represents a benchmark in performance at its price. So let's see how its big brother gets on. The Denifrips Pontus 2 retails for £1,900 in the UK, built like a colossus with thick aluminium plates all round to double up as shielding as well as suppress resonance. The Pontus 2 measures 320 by 330 by 80 millimetres, that's 12.6 by 13 by 3.1 inches. It weighs a whopping 8.5 kgs or 18.7 pounds. Going from left to right, there's a button to take the DAC out of standby, two to toggle between the inputs left and right, a button to invert the phase, as well as one to switch between oversampling and non-oversampling mode. When the light's on, the DAC's in non-oversampling mode. There's a button to mute the DAC as well as one for mode. That can be used to configure the I2S pin layout for the I2S input, but also to switch between slow and sharp digital filters. In order to switch between filters, you have to mute the DAC first and then press the mode button. Look out for the optical input LED. The first time you press the mode button, it will just indicate status. And then if you press it again with the light on, that's the slow filter and with the light off, that's the sharp filter. After a few seconds, the DAC will revert back to normal operational mode. I'm a fan of the discrete LEDs that indicate input and sample rate. This is a purist piece with no preamp functionality or remote control. So it's butts off seats if you want to change anything. The Pontus 2 is a fully balanced DAC with XLR and RCA analog outputs. There are digital inputs on coaxial RCA as well as on BNC for a true 75 ohm connection, two professional AES EBU connections and an optical TOS link as well as a USB connection. It's reassuring to see an I2S input accessible via a HDMI connector as well as a high quality Furotech mains IEC connector. I think that all high-end DACs should have an I2S input. That isn't to say that that's always the best quality connection because that depends on what you're using as a digital transport. But I'm not gonna get into that today. If everything goes to plan, I am hoping to do a separate video where I specifically test the I2S input on the Pontus 2. What I wanna focus on today is what you get extra for your money as you come out of the 800 pound Aries 2 into the Pontus 2 at over double the price. Let's start with the power supply. The whole thing is encapsulated in a thick metal alloy case and mounted to the bottom chassis plate, completely isolating the power supply from the sensitive electronics. The Pontus 2 has two O-ring transformers that radiate even less noise than a standard toroidal transformer. One handles the digital section, whilst the other takes care of the analog section. Take a look at those three rows of capacitors that form part of the low dropout regulated multi-stage linear power supply. It's been upgraded in the Pontus 2. Switching to the Pontus 1 supply, you can see two rows of larger capacitors. Denifrips are not alone in thinking that many smaller capacitors are better than fewer larger ones. You can see that the Aries 2 has a more basic power supply with only one O-core transformer. Now cast your attention to those four banks of R2R ladder resistors. Yes, the Aries 2 has two banks of resistors per channel operating in balance mode. The Pontus 2 has twice as many resistor ladders. What can be the benefit when two per channel are already a balanced design? The answer is why some high-end DACs deploy multiple DAC chips. They can sum the results and average out the noise. Another method that the Pontus 2 uses to lower the noise floor is to galvanically isolate all the digital inputs coming in. This ensures that the noise further upstream isn't going to pollute the DAC. The mounted DSB board also has been upgraded from the one fitted as standard to the Pontus 1. 
it can now handle PCM files up to 1536 kilohertz and DST times 1024, making it future proof and appealing to users who upsample. So all this stuff that I'm talking about, Denifrip's going to all this trouble to advance the design of the Pontus 2 over that which is offered on the Aries 2. Does that translate into sound quality? Well, before I get into that, let me start by setting some expectations. I've gained quite a bit of experience now listening to various chip-based DACs. You know the type that I mean, a DAC that's built around an ESS, AKM, Burr Brown, Cirrus Logic, and a whole bunch of other DAC chips. It's possible to build a really good cost-effective sounding DAC based on one of those chips, feed it with very clean power and have a fully discrete class A output stage. And as a standalone piece, those type of DACs now can retail for as little as 500 pounds, offering a level of performance that 10 years ago you wouldn't have thought possible. There's also some really good implementations of those type of DACs inside amplifiers. I think the best I've seen is inside the Hegel H95 the same DAC inside the H190 and that performs extremely well for a cost-effective DAC. It's a similar story for my Chord Mojo which for £400 has limited functionality but again is a fine sounding DAC for the money. All of those DACs including the Chord Mojo and the one inside the Hegel H190 I'd consider to have some fundamental shortcomings if I'm evaluating them purely from a high-end audio perspective. They're either clean and analytical sounding or they're warm and they lack a little bit of resolution. The Denifrips Aries 2 was the first DAC that I encountered for a thousand pounds. In fact, it's the only DAC under a thousand pounds that got all the fundamentals right. You can tick off your audiophile checklist. The soundstage has width, it has depth. The imaging, the location of instruments within the soundstage is clear as well. The bass has good articulation and definition. There's a good balance between bass weight and bass control. The mid-range sounds natural the leading edges and the decay structures of notes clearly present, and the highs have extension and refinement. If your system is capable enough of revealing it, the Pontus 2 will take your musical satisfaction to another level, beyond what the Aries 2 is capable of delivering. Perhaps the most noticeable trait is the space between the instruments. This is only possible because the Pontus 2 times so well. The location of each instrument within the soundstage is locked down. The bass is so clearly defined that you can hear each note without any strain at all. In fact, there's such articulation in the bass that if you play a double bass or an electrical bass for that matter, you can hear the reverberation within each note itself. And it's a similar story in the mid-range. You'd expect the leading edges to be crystal clear, but the background is so quiet that the decay structures have more space and time to reveal themselves much more fully than it was with the Aries 2. And the high frequencies, again, you'd expect refinement and extension, but sibilance control is something that sets DACs apart. It's very difficult for a hi-fi system to reveal the decay of a cymbal. That isn't very clear on the Aries 2. It's much more prominent on the Pontus 2. In short, the Pontus 2 is capable of giving you greater insight into the musical experience than what you can achieve with the Aries 2. I should state that all my comments relate to listening to the DAC with the slow filter engaged. If you engage the sharp filter, there will be a loss of fidelity. Switching between the oversampling and non-oversampling modes is a little bit more interesting. In oversampling mode, the DAC is a little bit cooler and more analytical sounding. In non-oversampling mode, it's a little bit warmer and richer with a slight loss of fidelity. Which of those two you will prefer will depend on the rest of your system and the recording to some extent. This section is going to be short and sweet. There's not too much to go over here. Just make sure you've got that slow filter engaged and then you can switch between oversampling and non-oversampling mode whilst you're playing tracks to see which one you prefer. As I mentioned earlier, which one you prefer will depend on your system and to some extent the recording that you're playing. I've been listening to the Denifrips Pontus 2 continually since it arrived a couple of months ago and that's because it's comfortably the finest sounding DAC that I reviewed so far clearly significantly better than my Chord Mojo. I can clearly hear the differences between those two DACs when I connect something like the Wilsington R8 or the Hegel H95 to the Amphion Argon ones. But is it sensible to go and spend the best part of two grand on a DAC if you've got speakers and amplifiers at around a thousand pounds a piece? And I'd say no, stick to something like the Denifrips Aries 2 
and that'll get you pretty much all the way there. What about something like the Hegel H190 connected to the Amphion Argon 3S's? Well, even then, I think the case is borderline. The DAC inside the 190, I think, is good enough. You certainly get more bang for your buck if you upgraded your speakers or your amplifier first. It's when I connected my exposure 21 pre and 18 super mono blocks to my beloved Proact Response 1 SCs, I felt the difference between the Cord and Mojo and the Pontus 2 was night and day. It's hard to see how I'll go back to the Mojo now. Where did I land with the Denifrips Pontus 2? It's clearly the finest sounding DAC that I've heard since I started reviewing on this channel, but it's also the most expensive, so I'm not going to base my judgment solely on that. But before starting this channel, I've heard a bunch of DACs here at home, including the Cord Hugo 1, the Cord Cutest, although that was for a brief period, and a name DAC, I forget the model number, about four years ago, it retailed for about £3,000. The Pontus 2 clearly performs above the level of all of those DACs. In fact, the only DAC that I remember being as enamoured about the performance was a Lin Climax, again from about four years ago, that retailed for £12,000. I'm not saying that the Denifrips Pontus 2 at almost £2,000 performs at that level. How can I say that with any confidence listening four years apart? And there's clearly levels of performance above the Pontus 2 as well. For example, combining the best traits of the oversampling mode with the non-oversampling mode would be an improvement, and that's why more expensive DACs exist. I'd like to think that over 30 years of being in this hobby, I've built up a degree of experience and judgment, and I know when something special comes along. And that's the case here. Take into account that battleship build quality as well, and you've got something that represents real value. The Denifrips Pontus 2 gets an outstanding from this channel. So that's it from me. All that remains for me to say is if you like this video, please hit that like button, please share it. If you like what I'm doing with this channel and you haven't subscribed already, please consider subscribing. And don't forget to check me out on Patreon, where I have some Patreon-only videos and some consultancy services that I offer. But for today, for now, a British audiophile, signing off.